Okay. Hi everybody and welcome back to Sit and Knit for a Bit with Arne and Carlos. And we are as always your hosts Arne and Carlos. And we are back after having some Easter holidays, uh, back to do your favorite podcast uh, where you can sit with us and enjoy a little bit of knitting or crocheting or whatever it is you're doing while we recap uh, what's been going on in our life, show you our latest projects, talk about knitting, design, traveling and all the things we love talking about. Yeah, and when you see the view behind us, you might think we're in Africa. But we're not. We wish. Yes, we but do. We're, <laughs> but we're not. Yeah. But we found this in the stash when we were cleaning because we've been cleaning a lot. Yeah, and South Africa was the last trip we actually did last year before COVID. So um, it's very special for us in our minds because yeah. it really was the last trip. Um, and 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 I think I see you've carried the African theme uh, quite some Am way. I? You're wearing your African t or sorry, your African shirt with all the. African animals, the giraffes, yeah. zebras, elephants, and crocodiles, and yeah, everything. Lemures, and, and even have cufflinks yes. with the hair of the elephant. Wow! Picked from bushes. It's not from the. No elephant were killed. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They picked the elephant hair from the bushes. They're beautiful. They're from South Africa. Yeah, and we've but got this is not from South Africa. No, this is from how oh, much? From an antique and um, secondhand flea yeah. market. Which I love to go. In Hamar, there's like an, a sports arena called the Viking Ship, and it's called the Viking Ship because uh, the roof of the sports arena looks like a Viking ship, which is turned um, upside down. Is and that where in Carrigan? This yeah, ex oh yeah, yeah. yeah. That is, is yes, that is the Nancy. very N Nancy Carrigan and Tanya Harding. Now that's where that drama yes. happened. That is the very yeah. famous sports arena where Nancy Carrigan and Tanya Harding had their drama. Well, actually, Tonya Harding had it uh, during the 1994 Olympics in Lillehammer. Um, if you uh, are that old uh, and if you were watching uh, the ice skating, uh, you will have you will remember how Tonya Harding uh, started crying because of something with her skate, and there was a big drama because of the attack on Nancy Kerrigan and all of that. Yeah. So anyway, they do organize a, a yearly. Um, no, two times. Oh, is it by before by the COVID? It is like one time in the spring and one time oh, okay. in the autumn. And I like to go to the spring. Yeah, it's like a, it's like an antiques and uh, vintage um, yeah. exhibit where people from all over Norway, uh, you know, dealers and sellers, they go there, they get themselves a little spot, and then they sell the stuff they bring. And and yeah, and uh, we have a we love posters, uh, especially these school posters. Oh, this is nice. This is very beautiful. If we need to hang it now for a while because it's been rolled up and we forgot yeah, we had it. We so did, We yes. found it while we were cleaning during Easter. Yeah. So it needs to stretch out a little. Yeah, and then we've got some medical ones too, don't we? Some posters that are more about anatomy and things like that. I think we have. Yeah, where, that we where both... Are those? I have no idea, but I know I know we <laughs> bought them. Um, and as all of you know, Arnett well, loves to, to shop. Uh, actually, as a matter of fact, yesterday... Now, I have to start from the beginning, because it, this is this is quite funny, because we had a discussion okay. in the morning. Yes, yesterday morning. Yeah, because uh, you said we had to clean up, and I said, I can't clean before we have the other house finished, and then you... You said, no, 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 you're what? like a hoarder, and, no, I, and no, I said, no, 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 I'm not a hoarder. That's exactly not what the discussion That's what was happened. about. The discussion was as follows. <laughs> you were saying that no matter how much you clean... Now that's what I was saying. No matter what, how much I clean... It's still a big mess. Nothing happened. And I replied to that in a very dry way. That's because you're a hoarder. And, and, then then I you said, said, and then you said, no, I'm not. I'm not a hoarder. And I said, yes, you are. Because when I throw things away, when I clean and I throw things away, I throw things away. When you throw things away, you just move them from one pile to the other. You are a hoarder. I have to look. You close. denied that, of course. Of course. You looked into my eyes and... Because you I just, you say, like, if you bring one thing in, into the house, you should throw away two things. Okay. I went down to the recycle place and I, I guess I throw away like 200 ma old magazines okay which was like I, I took out everything that was interesting and then that's he, 200 things out and then and he how said much did i bring into that yeah house? and then he said what uh, i'd love to go on a, on a little excursion yeah, because we need to get out yeah we need to get people. out of the house so we went on a little excursion and ended up in a thrift store um and uh so, and I was very modest first. I was very modest. I found um, 
two embroidery embroidered pieces and a box which were very nice for my ginger cakes because I'm a master of gingerbread cakes yes you are and I found this really nice antique mm -hmm. box which we had at home when I was a kid so now I have yeah have and, and then we were about to leave um, as we were leaving I was thinking thank goodness that's all he bought <laughs> Because, you know, I was envisioning, uh, you know. So as we're leaving, a third lady turns up and he starts talking to this third lady. And, and it, turn, it, turns, it turns out that there's three shops in one. So uh, <laughs> Arne ended up going back with her. Yeah, because I started to talk to her and then she, I said I came from Ghost Star. And then she said, oh, my sister, she's married to a guy from Ghost Star. And she is upstairs. She has the one of the yeah. Stands we said upstairs. yeah. We met her. And I said yeah. We met her. But then I'm going to go in and talk to her because we're related, yeah. or I'm related to her husband. So I went in again. And, and while then I was an walking, hour later, an hour later. Yeah, but when I went up the stairs, I saw suitcases. I didn't see them the first yeah. time. There was like suitcases that I collect because I have a project going on. Yeah. And. I I came out with four no I came out with three suitcases and a picnic suitcase yeah and the picnic suitcase was hilarious because uh, <laughs> it was he said beautiful. to me this is the most amazing picnic basket you'll ever see um, and then he said but I have to go in and pay so he goes in to pay for for it and I I was like oh my I have to see you know what the most beautiful picnic basket in the world looks like I open it and there's literally crap in there it's like plates and 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 everything's plastic you can't and, throw plastic away so I, I save the environment yeah some of the stuff <laughs> is even you know the one you know the non -res how do you call it? the disposable plastic cutlery that you buy in the supermarket but that they've stuck it in there so we're sitting in the car i mean i'm very disappointed because i was expecting you know porcelain and cutlery and silver and you Not know for a picnic no i know i know anyway anyway <laughs> anyway so uh, Arne, uh, we're sitting in the car and Arne is saying, oh, I am so happy, especially about the picnic basket. And now we'll never have to buy any more disposable cutlery in the supermarket. And I look at him and I say, well, uh, when we get home, um, I want to be there when you open that suitcase again. Because you must have opened it. I did. You did, right? <laughs> I didn't see. You didn't see I it. didn't see what you saw because I was so gobsmacked. Is that the word? Well, when you I had saw a, the beautiful okay, suit. so so you you had a buzz, you know, like when a drug addict, <laughs> it's like when a drug addict gets his drugs I think and feels uh, delirious. Like it's that. pretty much like that yeah. when you buy something. Yeah. No, when you collect things. Not collect, yeah. Anyway, it was hilarious seeing Arne reopen the picnic uh, suitcase and seeing all the crap that he bought <laughs> inside. So yeah, that was our uh, outing uh, yesterday. It was, it was fun though. It was nice. It was a lot of fun. We brought on some nice pieces. Yeah, now we have a story to laugh about with the... Uh... And that was so funny because I said to this lady who owned the shop that I, I, had to, I had to tell you something because this morning we had the discussion before we came because <laughs> <laughs> I denied being order and Carl said, yeah, I think you are. And I said, no, no way. Yeah, you were very, very, you know. <laughs> and I said to the lady, I think I had to go out now and apologize. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> I feel, I feel uh, maybe I'm a little bit like a hoarder and then she said she had the same problem but she understood me because you can never have enough of beautiful things yeah. around you. Apparently and one winter she took her, <laughs> her entire shop and there was a lot of stuff in there. She took her entire shop and she put it in her living room and her husband was sitting there uh, among all those chachkas <laughs> And he was just <laughs> sitting there. I can just imagine that being yeah, quite hilarious. Yeah, he was hilarious. so curious, like one, one winter with all the stuff. But I would have loved that. And when I told her, I need that. I need this picnic suitcase in the Beetle because we're going on a trip, at least two trips this summer. Mm. And she said, uh, you have a Beetle? That's what I, re I wish yeah. I had a Beetle, but my husband. <laughs> yeah, it seems like, uh, well, no, we don't have a lot in common because I support you 100%. I support you. I support you with you a deal. Yeah. I, I let you buy anything you want, huh? Because you know it's your money too. And I'm sometimes, gonna... Carlos, you have to admit, like sometimes you think I bring home things we really don't need. And, and sometimes you prove me sometimes wrong. Sometimes I prove you wrong. But I have to say, uh, my insights were were quite were really enjoying themselves yesterday as you and reopened this, the picnic. Uh, and this suitcase. comes from a man who have 
Norway's biggest collection of souvenir dolls. I never collected them myself. But you didn't throw them away. No, you didn't throw them away. No. I, I would have thrown them away in a heartbeat. No, now, my wouldn't. souvenir doll collection <laughs> you is wouldn't quite... throw them away. I would. Oh. It's quite the story. My parents collected souvenir dolls for my little sister, you know, because we traveled so much. So the collection is of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dolls collected throughout, I don't know, 20 years. Yeah. And, um, and some are really beautiful and some are... Well, the beautiful ones we've taken out. There's a couple of Russian dolls from the 1950s that are probably also very valuable uh, and they're stunning, okay? So though, and there's a couple of Peruvian ones that are handmade but I framed. that are extremely beautiful. No, but the story is that my parents um, collected this for my sister who I eventually ended up uh, marrying an American and she moved to the USA. She lives in Austin, Texas. And uh, she, you know, one day she told my parents, um, Thank you for collecting, but I don't want them. Um, and my parents uh, <laughs> decided, without telling me, that next time they came to visit me in Norway, they would bring three or four boxes of uh, souvenir dolls, which they did. Yeah. And I didn't have a heart to throw them away. I, I, I wish I would, but I can't. Because they, they have been collected by my yeah. parents for so long. And I started to make pictures of them. Yeah. Uh, only one picture is finished. We don't have it on the wall yet, but no. it came out nice. I just have these IKEA frames that are like thick, so you can put stuff inside. And then I put on uh, cut, yeah. like a piece of wood on the back, and it's covered with. So I would. I wanted to throw them away, and I still want to throw them away. But, but I don't have. I don't have the heart to do it because it's my parents collecting for twenty years. Although. 99.9% .9 of those dolls are really bad. I mean, we're talking bad <laughs> plastic, we're talking ugly clothes. I mean, there's like a few little pieces there that are amazing, like the Russian ones. Uh, but, but the rest is crap. Uh, but I have to say though, I have to say, thinking about it, if you have our doll book um, and you open the, the first page, so the page that is glued onto the hardcover, you will see like a collage of all the dolls. And then you'll see the same collage on the back of the book. Mm -hmm. It's got like all the dolls in like random positions. Uh, and that is actually inspired by that thing that you were talking about, where you took all the souvenir dolls but that and you glued them. Minogue. They did, yeah. But they also came from the, the idea that you yeah. glued all of those randomly in a frame. Mm. Yeah. I think that's a nice picture. Actually. It's a great picture. So we've had, we, we actually had a little bit of... Um, of use for these ugly souvenir dolls that I can't <laughs> throw away. I wish I could, but I can't. But that doesn't make me a hoarder because I no. want to throw them away. Yeah. And I, but I feel that I would. I don't. I don't want to do that to my parents. No. You, on the other hand, you don't want to throw them away because they may come in useful one day. It's kind of like the same when every time you wear out a pair of jeans and it's got like eight holes in it, and I say, I'm throwing your jeans away, and you say, no, because I, I need them in the garden. My question is, do you actually need 24 pairs of jeans with holes for your garden? No, I don't have that because you throw them away. Yeah, but that's I what have... I mean. <laughs> that's what I mean. <laughs> but I have made a decision now because we ha I had this garden jacket, the knitted jacket. I've, I've been wearing, wearing that for years and mm. it's so worn out and I, I tried to mend it mm. and actually I've come to a point now where I actually gave up. Yeah, yeah, that's I'm not true. gonna do it because I'm gonna wash it, I'm gonna cut out the piece and put them in and our archives. Keep that in, in, in the folder, archive yeah. and the rest go into a bird or something. Or yeah. for the, make a teddy bear and I yeah, unravel the yarn. the yarn and use it for something because else. Because I, I started to make a new sweater now in with leftover yarns. Mm, and it's I, beautiful. I'm gonna do that. Yeah, pattern. We don't have it here, but we'll show you next time. Now, speaking of gardens, speaking of clothes with holes, speaking of all that, I am officially over this whole COVID thing. Um, <laughs> officially, yeah, yeah, that's I've had up. it. I have had it. I really want to leave the house. I want to live like we used to. We can't until we get the vaccine. But I decided that I'm no longer going to be doing the Zoom thing. So uh, lo and behold, today I am wearing pants. 
I don't, I don't think, think nobody saw it. them. The, the, but I am. You're I actually am. wearing pants. I'm wearing pants and from my nice shirt yeah. And... I'm wearing pants from my favorite designer. It's a Swedish designer called Philippa K. They are in a wool blend. They're beautiful pants. They're slightly cropped. It seems like you're going somewhere. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, um, <laughs> these pants. I love wearing them in the summer. I wear them with sneakers and invisible socks, and then they also look really good with a pair of loafers. Yeah. And yeah, I decided I'm not dressing for no more Zoom meetings ever again. So you do the full thing from now on. I am doing the whole th the full Monty, but the other way around. So I'm wearing clothes. Uh, you, on the other hand, I mean, you went through. But I have my I have my nice shirt with African yeah, animals. Yeah, and you spent twenty minutes uh, matching your cufflinks, cufflinks. But then I have a long a blue long johns. Yeah, is this the one with all the holes in it? it ha everybody has holes in the long johns. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, yeah. I'm I'm looking good from I'm. Try to dress yeah. up, like from the waist up. You dress for a Zoom meeting. Yeah. I'm dressed. I'm ready to go. I'm I am pretty at much. Home, but yeah. it's nice to have a nice shirt sometimes. Mm. I'm ready to go out. I'm ready to have fun. Yeah. I can't wait. Uh, Norway is still a little bit late uh, in terms of the vaccine, so uh, we won't get our vaccine until June. But we are in the queue, and we are waiting for that. And I can't wait to start Just going out again. And then we will travel. Yeah, we got lots of plans for yeah, we traveling. Planned, uh, I, actually, now we've been planning our trips this summer. We did that during Easter. So mm. we are having two trips planned in Norway with the yeah. Beatle. And we are going to, in May, I think we're going to have some meetings with our yeah. travel Travel agent to agent talk about, and talk about, about new trips. resuming our trips in 2022. Because we had this African yeah. theme coming up. We, do. we had the cruises in Norway and... And talking about the cruise in Norway, didn't you? Was it Petra and Natasha? Yeah, they, had, they made a podcast. About yeah, we want to give a shout out to a shout YouTube. Out. Yeah, we're going to give a shout out to a lovely YouTube channel uh, today. And the YouTube channel is actually uh, our friends' channel. Uh, their names are Petra and Natasha. They are a lovely mother and daughter duo. Uh, of knitters. Um, actually, uh, Natasha is uh, a graphic designer and she does the most beautiful um, lettering. She does, she calligraphy. does cal calligraphy. calligraphy. It's really, really beautiful. Uh, Petra is a researcher. I think she's a scientist. Mm -hmm. uh, and she's from the UK, but they live in the US. Uh, they live in Connecticut. Petra and Natasha lives in Boston. And uh, we want to give them a shout out. They have this lovely YouTube channel where they do um, they do like uh, podcasts like we do. Um, I think that Natasha does a lot of hand lettering as well in in uh, in their uh, in their channel. And last week they did a whole recap of their trip with us uh, on Hutteruten uh, on the Norwegian mm. Coastal Express because we met them on our knitting cruise in 2019, and we became really good friends. Um, we keep uh, in touch with them um, quite a lot. And actually, when we were in, in Boston in 2019, after the cruise, we, we met them for a lovely lunch. Yeah. It was really, really nice. So we haven't so, seen them for a while. Yeah, we, we see, haven't we seen see them. We see you on YouTube. Yeah, we, we, <laughs> we love seeing you guys on YouTube. It's a small channel, but if you're interested in finding out more about our knitting cruises or, you know, how they are or how people perceive them, it's always better to hear it from somebody who is taking them uh, and who is not us. So we highly recommend you to go to Knit Inc which is their YouTube channel, so Knit for Knitting, and Ink because of the calligraphy, so I and K. Um, we're going to put the description or the, the link to their channel uh, in the comments here below, so you can also click there. Go to Knit Ink and enjoy an hour reminiscing of a wonderful trip that we had in 2019 on the Hurtiruten, on our knitting cruise. Very, very lovely ladies to listen to. They're very relaxing. Um, you know, look, I had to do... Uh Bin, ben, binge, binge watching? Binge, binge watching because during Easter I didn't see a lot of the, my YouTube friends as Kate says. And yeah. Because I, I don't know what happened during Easter. I was reading crime and didn't watch a lot yeah, I that think, I normally watch. So I have to do binge watching. And yeah, I think I, I suspect we had a little bit of a YouTube fatigue. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then actually this makes sense because our viewer, um, our subscriber rate went down a little bit um, during Easter. I think a lot of it people It seems have that. like a lot of people were not subscribing and maybe the views went down a little bit. And I think it's because people are a little bit fed up with all the YouTubing and they want to go outside and now that the vaccines have arrived and mm. maybe things are opening up slowly, um, less people are, are hanging out on YouTube for a, for a period of time. And actually that's how I felt. I so, felt the same, but now... So suddenly I... I realized that I hadn't caught up on Kate 
worked for a very long no, time. I, I have to do. And have you have you caught up on the on the Chateau Diaries? No, no. I haven't caught up for a few, few weeks now actually. Yeah. So I have to. Is the Chateau Diaries the doing it ourselves? Kate in the last homely house. Yeah, the only Petra thing I'm, the only thing I'm caught up on is is well, I did I did Natasha and the Petras Knit Inc. I, I I enjoyed that episode immensely because it was about the cruise. Mm -hmm. uh, I did that, and then I do the recaps of RuPaul's Drag Race every <laughs> yeah. every week because I love. But that's on TV. No, the recaps are on YouTube. Oh, you watched those? Yeah, the recaps oh. with Trixie Mattel. Oh, that's what you watched. Yeah, they are, they're really fun. I love, that's one of my favorite reality shows ever. Uh, and yeah, I, uh, I, I, I watch everything related to RuPaul. What have I been watching? Like, hmm? I haven't watched... Well, you watch Ra Drag Race with me. Yeah, I watch on TV, but I don't watch the other one that you watch. No, the, the recaps, no. no. That's true. No. The pit, they're called The Pit Stop. Yeah. And they're really fun, yeah. I've been watching um, some TV series I don't know I don't remember I'm being a little bit yeah we watched all the Poirot and all the crime uh, and actually we re we yeah. rewatched somebody somebody in the comments mentioned Killing Eve which is actually one of our favorite shows that's a good show it's we, on HBO we, we, it yeah. is amazing we love Killing Eve so much however I have to say the first season that of Killing Eve uh, we were watching it while I was recovering from COVID like immediately after I'd had it. So I was still quite sick. Mm. And um, it turned out that I had I, I had blocked a lot of it because I lost mm. a lot of my memory after COVID. So re-watching season one of Killing Eve uh, during Easter this year, I realized that I'd m forgotten about <laughs> most of it. So yeah. it was kind of like seeing it again. When I, uh, I was uh, surprised how quick things happened. It's like, there's a lot of things I remember from the episodes, and it was in the same episode. Yeah. It's oh, like, okay. Oh, yeah. It's happening already it's, now. I it, thought it was like way. It's yeah. a phenom phenomenal show. If you, um, it's kind of like a, it's a, it's a crime thriller, cat and mouse. You've got, um, you've got a murderer, like a psychopath, and you've got Eve, mm -hmm. um, and they have this cat and mouse mouse game and because they love, they kind of love each other. They're obsessed with each other, and it's a dark comedy. It's BBC. Um, yeah, sometimes you laugh and you feel guilty. It's hysterically, I sh I laugh right it's, now, it's or, hysterically funny. I've been watching something you haven't been watching. What? That's something on uh, national TV in Norway, and I call. Okay. It's uh, Norway's toughest. Mm. It's the young, I've heard of it. Young kids who, who do these competitions to be crowned or the, the toughest. The toughest, and this was the finale. I saw oh. that this morning. And it was good. It, I think it's actually quite interesting. Yeah, There's a nice people. This is young boy, men and women who do this. Very tough. You, you should watch it together. Yeah. I think you would like it. Uh, uh, and I won't yeah. tell you who the winner is. Okay, I'm up for that. It sounds like it a was, good It plan. was a nice show. Very nice people. So other things we did in Easter. Um, again, you know, the whole tired of uh, <laughs> well, COVID thing. We I went think, to the groomers. Yeah, we went to the... And Freya and Helmer went to the groomers too. So we did a whole family grooming outing. Uh, went to Oslo. Um, did our grooming appointments. Didn't and see anything home. because everything was closed. Yeah. And then the day after we had a Zoom meeting and, you know, we still had that fabulous hair that was all styled by the, uh, by the stylist, both Arne and me. We looked fabulous. And um, You still look good. Look at me. It's you look fabulous down. too. But yeah, my, but you've got your curls, curls are back. back. Curls are back. Anyway, and, uh, and we were having the Zoom meeting and we were looking fabulous. And then Helmer came looking fabulous as well and then the person we were having the meeting with she really <laughs> it was so funny because she asked if we went to the same groomer all of us <laughs> and we thought that was quite funny i could do i could do that yeah me too yeah. but no we have different groomers for the yeah. dogs and for arne and me uh, but they're both really good and and then we had some drama with freya she is officially an old lady now. Well, it's her ninth birthday this weekend, yeah. so she's, she's officially nine retired. Nine years old, and she smelled a little bit fishy. Well, her from her mouth. From her yeah, mouth. So we had to go to the wet, and the wet said she had problem with her teeth. Yeah, teeth. So the, for the four, the four upper front teeth were loose, so, so our our vet had to pull them out. She lost her. Teeth her four front teeth. So she can't show her teeth anymore to help me. Well, she does, but she he, does. She he, tried. But they're not there. But she, they're gone. Yeah. Poor little. So girl. she's become officially an old she's toothless old lady, lady now. now. But we still love her dearly. Uh, yeah, ninth birthday, and Helmer had his second birthday 
Um, and that was the day we took him to the groomers. So happy birthday, Helmer! Happy birthday. We gave him a grooming trip for his yeah. birthday. Uh, now, uh, everybody who knows Helmer knows him as our long-term guest. And a lot of people are wondering if we have adopted him. Uh, and the answer to that is not very straightforward. Uh, we are keeping him <laughs> for the time being. Um, as long as we're not traveling, he can stay with us. And we are very, very happy to have him here. He is like the best long-term guest ever. I think we have um, adopted him. We kind of want to adopt him and we kind of think we have. However, there is always that sense of insecurity because what happens, and what happens when, when lockdown opens, is so? over and the yeah. world reopens and we have to travel again. I mean, it's been quite difficult. It's not been difficult, but it, we've had a guilty conscience about letting Freya stay with our housekeeper. And now suddenly our housekeeper is going to have to keep a second dog um, or we'll have to find uh, someone else who can, who can have him look. He knows we're talking about yeah. him. It's incredible, huh? Oh, you're looking. Anyway, anyway, we, we have... You're not leaving. I would say we have adopted him and I would say that he is mm -hmm. staying here for good, but we are still saying he's a long-term guest because we it's are... Uh, funny. Yeah, but we're a little concerned <laughs> about what happens when we start traveling. We have to be responsible. Uh, maybe we can't travel as much as we did. Maybe we have to reconsider our lifestyle because now we have two dogs instead of one. It's all this constant thought process in our mind. Yeah. And I think that, I think that we want to say yes, but we want to keep it open in case something... Uh, but then the issue is, if we can't keep him, who's going to keep him? Because, <laughs> because uh, the original owner's child, who is a very nice three and a half year old, is allergic. So um, they can't but keep him. I think this will be like, a lot of people will have, have this problem. Like, the, yeah. because there's a new thing now in Norway, a lot of people have bought dogs because of the lockdown yeah and like the the big pools is one of the the popular dogs yeah. oh, oh. show your teeth to, or show your non-teeth to helmer <laughs> let's see no, no 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 don't do that Poor girl. <laughs> no. we don't want her to show her no no so there will be like a lot of rescue dogs maybe probably yeah. so maybe we have to have more dogs mm, yeah if we're not traveling we can rescue yeah. her. But I think, I think you guys understand and can relate to our, to our predicament. We want to keep him, we want to say he's ours, we want to say we have adopted him, and we pretty much have. But we want to li li leave that little, you know, hmm, what happens when we have to start tra traveling again? Mm -hmm. Because we haven't really worked it out, so it's easier for us in our minds to call him a long-term <laughs> guest. Because that way, um, yeah, we don't feel so guilty already. No. I but we love him. I don't feel guilty. We love him and we want to keep him. Because we have plans. There are people we Miss can Miss. talk to and... Yeah. What's happening? Freya. The guy who is clearing the snow just drove past. Oh. Freya, Moos Moos. Moos Moos. And you know, what would a sit in it for a bit without Freya <laughs> barking. barking at the moose yeah. be like? I mean, so. it's, you just have to have that. Anyway, that's, that's, uh, that's the status on, on our beloved Helmer, our long-term guest who we have kind of sort of adopted anyway, uh, who we love dearly and uh, who we gave a grooming session for his birthday. And Freya, who <laughs> yeah. now lost her four front teeth. <laughs> uh, that sounds like a Christmas song. I think that's a very sweet little Christmas song about a little boy losing his <laughs> no, tongue. No, a mouse. It's a mouse. It's, yeah. Yeah. I wish for Christmas. Yeah. For Christmas? Anyway, uh, we've got some other <laughs> catching up to do. There's lots of stuff that went on. So uh, I'm dressed up, uh, went to the groomers, uh, Freya lost some teeth. Uh, we talked a lot because we did our podcast, didn't we? Mm -hmm. Our Easter podcast, 12 episodes, we talked about outdoor toilets or outhouses. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I'm how many outhouses did you use this, this uh, Easter? How many outhouses? Did you go to any outhouses no. this Easter? No, me neither. I didn't because we didn't go up to the mountains. That's true. We stayed here. <laughs> we have our little cabin just next door to this one. And yeah, we planned to go to the cabin, but we didn't. No. What happened? Why did we go on a holiday? I don't know. Cabin? I think we were... No, we had guests. Well, yeah, that was that too. For, to start with, we did we had a lot of work doing the podcast, yeah. 
uh, which kind of wore us out. And then, you know, it was finished. And then from that, we went straight to a photo shoot we had the photo for shoot Rowan, Rowan, which is the main reason why we actually went to the groomers. Yeah. Um, so we did the photo shoot for Rowan, which we'll talk about in a second. And then um, in, during Easter, on the Thursday, or no, on the Saturday, we had our niece and uh, her husband here. Uh, they stayed in the cabin because of you know the restrictions. We can only have two guests. So we had two. So guests. We had two guests, <laughs> and we and they were here to plan our our trip because they have a vintage car as well. Yeah. So, and that's, that's why we didn't use. That's the, why we didn't go there because we were too busy. Yeah, but anyway, we did talk about uh, the king and the queen of Norway or the royal family, and we explained during our podcast that um, a lot of people in Norway have their image in the outhouse or the, in the outdoor toilet. Mm. Now, we were reading comments and it seems like a lot of people found that to be offensive. But it's so not. It's, it's not. not. So we, we thought today we would tell you the story um, of why uh, this happened. You tell the story because you remember it more. Well, I think you can remember. If we go back but about... Maybe people are, will be offended when they tell the story. You maybe think? it's too tough for people. No, I because, think we should tell Okay, them. I can tell. Okay, so we'll go... It. Yeah, but let's, let's just go back a hundred years yeah. to about 1905. It's in the old days like when... Yeah, 1905. It's oh. around 1905. You have to tell it. No, 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 1905. Is that when the old first king came? Old yes. Old came? Yes. So we got... Norway got... A new king. A new king. In 1905. Håkon, who was a Danish prince, and he was married to a princess from England, and yeah. her name was Maud. Her name and was Maud, and she was the daughter of Edward the Seventh. Yeah. So she was a granddaughter of Queen Victoria. So the Norwegian royal family and the British royal family are very closely related. Yeah. And those are the first king and queen since the way back. Because Norway was part of Denmark and, and then Sweden, part of Sweden, and so back and forth like so this. So Norway gained independence from Sweden, and suddenly the king of Norway was no longer the king of yeah, Sweden. And then they had like they voted for it, I think, and Nor the Norwegian people wanted to have a kingdom. So we got the Danish there was a referendum as a king, and the 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 first king and the queen is framed in our bathroom. Yeah, we have a we have an image of King Håkon and Queen Maud in our. Yeah. And that's like a tradition in Norway that you have a picture of the royal family in your bathroom, especially like in the out houses, mm -hmm. the outdoor toilets. And the story is that way back in the old days, you know, 1905, yeah, there wasn't a lot of toilet paper. In there was these, no toilet. Paper. There was no toilet paper. Actually, I remember when I grew up there, when I was little, and we came up to these cottages on maybe on some old farms. There wasn't toilet paper in the Really? Um, yeah, there was old newspapers, old papers. Was this in 1905? No, this is not in the <laughs> 60s. Yeah, but that's not normal. But in 1905, there was it no... It was normal. Like, I it never could... heard of that. You had old paper in the in the. I've toilet. always had toilet paper my whole life. But in 1905, there was no toilet <laughs> You're paper. You're younger. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. So there was no toilet paper in 1905, and what people did when they did their business and they needed paper was they take the magazines or the newspapers in the outhouse. It was a pile of newspapers and magazines and they would in use the toilet. That. Yeah. However, however, they would never use page three. What was on page three, Arne? Picture of the royal family. Yep. Or the king or the queen. And because they would not disrespect the king and the queen, they would not use page three. What they did was they ripped out page three and they hung it on the wall. And then they used page four. So that's respect. Now we're talking about respect. Yes. Respect. And that is why uh, the tradition of the Norwegian royal family on the outdoor toilet is alive today. However, there is a continuation as well, mm -hmm. which is quite interesting. So this was done. Um, I don't know the situation with toilet paper during World War II, but that was a time when it was difficult to get stuff because it was all rationed. There was a problem during COVID, you remember? People were... Oh, yeah, yeah. That's the first thing people went to buy, toilet paper. <laughs> yeah, the, the shops were empty. For I remember we did that too. Bought, yeah, we, had, we did it because like, we heard about it on the news. You have to buy toilet paper. No, no, no. We, we didn't hear that on the news. We heard that everybody was, everybody was, was doing buying it. it. And so we were like sheep and we went and did and it. We don't have we don't have that much newspapers anymore. Yeah. We, we never buy No, because we read online. Anyway, anyway, so World War II, uh, I don't and know... And we don't use glossy magazines. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> okay. Are you, are you because done? you know, remember I said I went down to the, the recycling yeah, yeah, place yeah. and delivered 200 old magazines. Glossy magazines. So obviously, obviously we, we've never used them. They're in glossy the, and you don't use those. No, not in the outdoor toilet. Anyway, Arne, if you let me finish the story <laughs> yeah. that you were going to tell. So World, World War II, uh, there may have been rations, who knows. However, there was something else that happened in Norway during World War II. Uh, it was the fact that the Nazis invaded Norway. So um, at a point in, in, during the war, uh, Norway was full of Nazis, uh, and it would have been considered a massive provocation to have images of the Norwegian royal family in your home, in your living room, which a lot of Norwegians did actually yeah. before the war. Uh, it would have been considered a provocation, um, and you could have probably been shot as a, as a um, you know, for treason, because at the time the Norwegian royal family had escaped Norway, they were in the UK leading the resistance. So obviously the one place where you could have the Norwegian family hanging to, you know, remind you of, of freedom would have been in your outdoor toilet where the Nazis probably wouldn't have gone anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's that kind of reinforced the feeling of um, of, of of you know support for the royal <laughs> Does family. Does this mean that Nazis don't do that? I don't know, but number this two. is what I number two. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but this is what I read. Yeah. This is what I read. So anyway, anyway, we don't consider it disrespectful to have the royal family um, on the wall. Of our outhouses, and we even have a stunning image in an antique frame of the of King Hoko and Queen Moon in our own bathroom. Now we were reading comments, and somebody wondered uh, what the Norwegian royal family had in their outdoor toilet because yeah. we did mention they have one. And, and you found uh, the book. And actually, we can tell you because we have the book. So um, this book called uh, the King's House in Norwegian, Kongensus. Uh, was published a few years ago, and then the photographer ended up coming here to photograph our house. Did you see what he wrote? wrote? He, yeah. He wrote the message for us in the book. He did, yes. Yeah, and anyway, he ended up here because of uh, doing a shoot for L, Japanese L, yep. and they shot our house. And uh, he signed the book for us, and it says, uh, I'll translate it. It says, Tuarna and Carlos, uh, thank you for a fantastic visit uh, at your train station, almost royal. <laughs> So he... Maybe he saw the picture in yeah, the Yeah, maybe he saw the picture in the bathroom. Or the chandeliers. Anyway, Arne, yeah. I'm gonna see that, if that's I can... A that's an out outdoor toilet. So, there you go. There you go, that's the toilet. That's the king and the queen's outdoor toilet. Or outhouse. It's very beautiful. We have professional lamps from Eric now, so it's shiny. But it's beautiful. That's a beautiful yeah. bathroom or toilet. And maybe you noticed that there were here... There are a lot of images, and they're quite difficult to see. Is but there some relatives of them? Though? I am I sure that their relatives are hanging on that wall. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah, they should. They should be. But yeah, this is the king and the queen's royal um, outdoor toilet in their cabin up in Sikistalen, uh, where they spend Easter. Yeah. So there you have it. So now you've seen it. You ask, and we deliver. <laughs> Always. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, and we also have another big other gifts. Yeah, but uh, one more thing before we show the gifts. Because yeah. uh, we, we have opened it yet. We have just been discussing the pom pom nightmares uh, <laughs> yeah. that I had. That I had, I had to show you um, because I made more. Yeah, these pom poms, they really keep multiplying. And a lot of people mentioned on, their, on, their, on the comments that, about Star Trek. There's this episode with these little aliens that keep following them all over the oh, place yeah, and multiplying. Like, it's, it's almost like this. Yeah. Uh, because this is my my way of cleaning. Yeah. So I'm not going to use this yarn for anything anymore. So I make pom poms of them, and then I have like this project I'm going to do, which we will show you later when, when it's done. So if you if you may recall, if you, you um, put yeah. Them in the, <laughs> If you may recall, um, I we told you that I am the one that does the washing here, um, and that at one point, whenever I was <laughs> taking things out of the washing machine, these pom poms were kind of coming with it, with them with the clothes, and I was on my floor looking for pom poms everywhere. And then the same when I would take out the stuff from the dryer, because he kept going behind me. So at one point, um, I put some laundry in the machine and I pressed the button and I was certain that there were no pom-poms until I pressed the button and I'd started leaving the room where the washing machine is and then I look and I see six pom-poms on the floor 
who apparently were in yeah, the because machine. Because they jump out. When but the, they jumped out. Yeah, because when the machine stops, the door opens automatically, and then if yeah. there's pom poms, they jump out. So these pom poms have been following me everywhere. I find it quite hilarious because it's like they live their own life. Yeah, they do. They kind of do. But I'm gonna make more. I still have a few balls of this yeah. yarn. Black and white, and maybe more of the gr mm -hmm. very green ones. But I'm gonna do something very nice. Yeah, and our first tutorial on the pom-poms is gonna be out next Sunday. So, this coming Sunday. Uh, yeah, and I think that it's gonna be a fun tutorial. Felting pom-poms and then showing you what we do with them. I, I can't wait for that episode. Uh, we've got the pom-pom makers from Prim yep. uh, that we have been playing around with as, as well as the knitting cord or the After knitting we mill. did that video, I got the new idea. So these are for, for a new project. A new project. Mm. So that's the story of the pom-poms. They're here and uh, they keep following us yeah. around. And then I've been also been cleaning. I did some, I found some uh, crocheting that I'm working on because I'm going to use all this cotton yarn. So this, what, what's the name of this blanket? When it Hedwig. Was, Hedwig. Because when we went on the tour in America and Canada, USA and Canada last year, no, last year? 2019. 2019, the last touring we did. Then I brought a lot of yarn mm -hmm. and I made many of these. Yeah. This is for the table, like you put plates and stuff on top. Yeah, like a placemat. Placemat. They're beautiful. So I'm, I'm going to continue. I'm, I'm going to do more of this. Yeah. And I, but now they're all over the storage place. I have yeah. to collect them and see how many I have. But It's such an incredible pattern because uh, when you do it in wool, it gets this look. And these are done in cotton, so it's a completely different look. But it's still so beautiful. Yeah, but it's the same pattern, you just use... And you know what, it reminds me a little bit of something from the 70s. So I was mm -hmm. thinking we should do a cotton blanket in these colors for our beetle. That could be nice. That could be really nice. Then you have to buy yarn. Because now we work on leftover So yarn. what about our stash? But we don't have many balls in each color. We have oh, okay. only one <laughs> ball of each color. So we might need to go we yarn shopping. We have to shopping. buy some yarn and decide which colors. Mm, yeah. Anyway, these are fun. And if, you're, if you've if um, you been thinking about crocheting and you don't want to do a blanket, you can do six of these placemats for your table. They are beautiful. Especially the summer table outdoors. That's what, that's what, that was my plan. Because when we have these family parties, if yeah. we can have that this summer, we have the long table. And then I want every every person to have their own yeah that's, that would be great placemat. last time we had a family di uh, lunch here outdoors was in 2019 yeah. we had 18 people so yeah you've got about 15 to go yeah, i don't remember how many i made because mm. i i was crocheting constantly on the, for 78 days in Amer in usa yeah. and canada so i brought home a lot of finished yeah. ones and a lot of unfinished ones because i didn't bring enough yarn but I'm, yeah Anyway, I'm working on it. And if you haven't seen this before and you want to crochet it, just go to arnicarlos.com, visit our web shop, and you can buy the pattern for, for this, for the blanket uh, that you could also use for these there. It's really, really a fun project. I can guarantee mm -hmm. that. Or you can make one and have that like for a yeah. tea cup or coffee cup or something. Like a coaster. Coaster, yeah. that's the name. It's one of our favorite projects. It's one of the ones that is most popular, especially this time of the year. I see people are are looking for crochet yeah. patterns again. I, I suppose it's because of the weather maybe getting warmer and... I think it's more... I feel I feel like more like crocheting right now mm, yeah. because it's getting warmer even if it's... Today it's cold here but it's, it's getting warmer. Yeah, it is. So yeah. I think that comes with the spring. And then I work I work on my embroidery, that the blind lady's embroidery. Yeah, or, or dead. dead. Or maybe just fed up. Yeah. So I, it's now it looks like this. I'm almost finishing it. Mm -hmm. it's beautiful. So this is this will be in the beetle for the trips. Yeah. And the fun thing is that now there are people who've been watching our YouTube videos, mm, and we, it. we went when we went with Freya to the the den, the, the dentist, denti what, vet, mm. veterinary. Yeah, uh, we took it to the vet. We met a nice lady who has actually gave, given us some old magazines before, and she saw this, and she had some a lot of unfinished projects. So she was going to give them to us. So she's going to give it to us. So we're That's happy. That's so nice. So I'm yeah. looking forward to go to the bookshop down in the valley and pick up a bag with new unfinished projects, which and I if, will finish. And if you want to see some, uh, if you want to see some, um, 
some photos of the progress, all you need to do is go to our Instagram at Arna Carlos. That's our Instagram handle. And Arna posted three photos of the um, of the project. Yeah, of the three beginning, first the beginning, the middle, and kind of like towards the end yeah. that you can enjoy there. Um, and there, it's also, I believe it's also on our Facebook uh, page. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have Instagram, you can, you can find it on Facebook. We're also preparing to work on a very interesting project that we look forward to um, presenting to you guys in the fall. But until then, it's top secret. We're top not going to tell you anything about it, except that we've been doing some research, and we found a couple of old yeah, knitted mittens in, in our stash. in our. No, this is from our archives. Yeah, or archives. Yeah, stash archives. <laughs> And um, we thought we'd share them with you because they are quite interesting and very beautiful. Yeah, and we have only one of each. Yeah. But I think we should wash them because they're a little bit dirty. Yeah. Where this do you where, where do they come from? Do in, you know? In the attic in my parents' place. Oh, okay. And I got them. This is probably like a selbu mitten because it has this pattern on top, and then there's a smaller on the back. Yeah. I think is this this is a selbu mitten. I guess the the thumb is the same also. But yeah. this has been worn out, so you see there's a lot of mending there. We usually say what characterizes a traditional mitten, regardless of if, whether it's from Selbu or anywhere else, is that usually you have the, um, a large pattern on the top of your hand, and then that large pattern is actually, a, a segment of it is repeated on the thumb, on the outside of the thumb, and then on the inside of the thumb and the inside of the mitten, you usually have a small pattern. Mm. So you've got, and, and that is what characterizes a traditional Norwegian mitten. Um, but we could knit this one just yeah. from this. And this is guaranteed a selbu mitten yeah. because it kind of fits all the uh, all the uh, categorizations of, of what actually is a selbu mitten. But, but the then we have a second one. Different. And this one's very interesting because you've got the three selbu, or actually four. Mm -hmm. One, two, three. You've got four selbu roses on the front of the mitten. Uh, they are actually quite different. Um, looking in a way don't you agree hmm? there's a little bit of a modernity if you look at actually look at the screen <laughs> I think they look most, almost the same you do yeah. no i think that but i think the design looks very different oh yeah from the cell uh, yeah. yeah 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 that looks it looks it, I think it, it looks very graphic and actually kind of modern if you look at it i thought you meant the roses no 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 no, no. the design <laughs> the way the design yeah. fea mousse mousse. mousse 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 and then what's interesting is the back because th this is different from what we've seen before. And also the... Freya! Moose, Moose! Maybe it's the postman. Maybe it's the postman, yeah. He, he, moose and postman, that's who she loves. Freya! Freya! But look at the thumb, it's different. This no, yeah. doesn't have the... What's it called? Gusset? The gusset. There's no gusset. This is just knitted straight up and then... They just put in the thumb. And also and the, the rose is not repeated on the thumb either. No. So this is different. So yeah. We will have to find out, can you actually call this a Selbu mitten or is it just a mitten? I don't know. We're going to have to contact Selbu Museum and talk to them about yeah. this particular mitten and see what we can find out. Uh, but it's very interesting and we're very excited about finding it because, yeah, it's quite different. And I guess that even if there are some rules as to what makes a selbu a selbu yeah. mitten maybe there are some exceptions to the rule that maybe. are worth investigating so uh it's part of the project that we are working on um, but we will say no more our lips are sealed <laughs> See you. And, so uh, take them away we could tell you but then we'd have to kill you yeah and, but we, I and we don't do that I've, no. I've been watching too much killing eve i think <laughs> we're not gonna kill you <laughs> no um, yeah, and then as you were mentioning, uh, we had a lot of we received oh, we a few gifts. We got some nice gifts, and there's one gift that has been like traveling for a while. I think there was some yeah. problems getting to our place. And before we, we show them, we just want to mention that we don't encourage people to send us things because we feel uh, that we have everything we need here. I mean, it is a very loving. <laughs> Do we? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's go back to the beginning of this podcast and talk about your hoarding sk skills. <laughs> okay. uh, but this is really nice. No, but I mean, actually, we don't actually encourage gifts because we feel like we have everything we need here. We don't want people to spend money on us. We think that it's unnecessary and that um, maybe you should get something for yourself. Uh, we do think it's lovely, though, and very sweet but of you. But this is a very nice one. And, really and sometimes, it. it's, sometimes we just can't resist. People want to send us something and, you know, we'll say, yeah, I mean, we should, shouldn't, but... We'll say yes. 
And this is from, was it? Uh, from Janice. Janice. We Thank got a lovely you, gift from Janice. It has arrived. Yay! Yay! So I can show you first. We got this beautiful magazine. French. It's Paris edition in English. Oh, it's, it's in from, English? Yeah. When is it from? It doesn't say. It's, uh, so that's a nice magazine. These magazines we don't cut no. because they are too old. It's and a dollar then, twenty-five, and it was published. It should be the nineteen fifty-four. Nineteen fifty-four. Yeah, beautiful. And she wrote uh, to us and said she was in the queue, like in the shop, in the grocery store, I think it was. And then she found saw this magazine and she bought it for us. So thank you. We love this. <laughs> <laughs> it's all all about Dolly Parton. The whole thing. The whole thing. It's Dolly, Dolly, Dolly. Have you already read it? No. You're saving, saving that for a... <laughs> <laughs> oh, if this goes into the bookshelf with the Dolly Parton and the records. Yeah. The books and the records and all the stuff. Thank you. We love this one. And, and then we got the... Yeah, book. and then we got one for 50 cents that is called Bernat, the handicraft. That, that magazine is socks really Socks cool. and accessories. I love the way they photograph the socks, I have to say. It's very fun. When we have time, I will try to knit some of these socks because these are a little bit like the H&M socks you find. Yeah, them. hilarious. But, but these are hand-knitted. They're beautiful. They're beautiful. So yeah, so, maybe we'll get some inspiration to design some really kooky and crazy socks yeah. for so, people to yeah, knit. Just thank you. It was a very nice gift. I'm, yeah. I'm so Fantastic. Happy. Thank you so much, Janice. We really <laughs> appreciate these old magazines. Um, and as I said, we don't encourage people sending us things, but we do thank everyone for their kindfulness and thoughtfulness uh, when they think about us this way. But that this means this is three things into the house, so we have to throw out six. Yeah, well, good luck with that. <laughs> We've also got another gift uh, that we um, yeah. have truly appreciated receiving. This one comes from Sam. And uh, Sam lives in Ireland and I think he's Italian. I don't know. And we've opened it kind of like to take a peek, and we, but we thought we'd open it, really open it during our podcast and share this with you. Um, just to give you a quick background, um, he, he's, a, he's an artist and he painted a, a, a self-portrait of us, or sorry, he painted a portrait of us in watercolor. Yeah. And then he contacted us. Actually, we saw it and we loved it and we commented on his Instagram, which, by the way, is uh, Irish Farm Art. We're gonna leave um, we're gonna leave a uh, a link to his beautiful Instagram so you can enjoy his artwork. But Irish Farm Art is his handle. Mm -hmm. uh, we left a comment because we really loved it, and then he contacted us asking us if uh, if he could, you know, be so kind and and, and send it to us, and we accepted. Um, and then um, we got a letter from him, and it turns out he not only send us the, um, the watercolor painting, but he made a new one in oil. I, I found the place for it. Yeah, where? In the hall, in the staircase. Oh yeah, that's because a great place. I, if, you know, you look at these English, English country houses, there's always portraits of people hanging in the staircases or yeah. in the hall. So I found the place for it. So we're gonna open this up now, and Arne, I'm gonna give you the honor um, to show everybody We'll start with the watercolor, which was the original, um, which was the original thing that he said he wanted to send us, and he wrote us a lovely letter as well. Um, yeah, he's a really he seems to be a really nice guy. Yeah. So Ta -da! that's the watercolor. I think it's nice. It's you really have to nice. frame it. It looks like us. Yeah. <laughs> Good work. And then. The oil painting is really nice. Yeah, we have to frame it and put it on the wall. I love the oil painting. So this is us in Someone oil. Someone has painted us, Carlos. Yeah. We're painted. We've been painted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we will be framed. <laughs> yeah. We love it a lot. So thank you so much, Sam. And uh, for all of you, please go look at his work. Uh, uh, Irish Farm Art is his Instagram handle. And uh, yeah, he's done. he does lovely, lovely things uh, yeah. for you to enjoy. He's a really good painter, I have to say. Yeah. Yeah. We have to buy like a very big frame. This is what you want to do, isn't it? Yeah, but I, I can't do it. But One when day. I retire, I will be a painter. Yeah. Or in my next life, because I have the easel. I have an easel, but I can't paint. Yeah. <laughs> but one, very nice. one day we will do it. So this will be in the hall. Mm -hmm. Or maybe on the bookshelf. 
And finally, uh, <laughs> the last thing we're going to go through today is, you know, tell you a few stories of our photo shoot with Rowan. That, oh, we that did, was so nice. That we did in um, just before mm -hmm. Easter. I was a little uh, bit anxious about it because we're not, we're like normal people. And like normally, like you, you do these photo shoots, there's, there's models. But well, now... to start with, I mean, the background of the whole thing is that because of the COVID situation, yeah. you can't really... At this time when they needed the imagery, you can't really book models and stylists and, you know, everything because there's too many people you involved. You can't have that big crew. And you can't have these big crews and it's not ethical to, to subject models to, you know, potentially getting COVID. So it's been kind of crucial for companies like Rowan to rethink, you know, how are we going to, how are we going to photograph, how are we going to show the collections you know, in a year when it's mm. not feasible to do a shoot with models. And so we had our chat with Rowan about our collection and we, you know, kind of said, why don't you just send it to us in Norway? We'll, we'll style it. We'll do hair. We'll do makeup. We'll use ourselves as models. And so there wasn't much makeup. No, exactly. That was a good one. We didn't have to do makeup. <laughs> but yeah, so in the end, that's what we did. So they sent us everything. We booked a photographer, the one we've worked with for all our books. Mm -hmm. um, we made sure to keep in, you know, in place all the rules and restrictions uh, according to the Norwegian um, laws or government restrictions. Uh, we did the shoot outdoors as well, just to mm. keep it, you know, safe. And yeah, I did your hair. I actually, the day we went to our hairdresser, our groomers, um, I also had a lesson yeah. on how to do curly hair. And so you did a good job. I thought I thought I did a great job. Your hair is really curly and beautiful. Uh, yeah, we did hair, uh, we did the styling. Um, I haven't done styling in so many years. It's, you know, the last times we've done photo shoots with Rowan, we've actually been there kind of mm -hmm. art directing it or kind of, you know, giving our input and our ideas, but not really doing anything. Um, but we but did. It was kind of fun. But we used to do the styling in the past when yeah. we were in the fashion industry. So it's fun kind of planning the whole shoot, creating the concept, and then styling everything. You know the good old, the good, good you know, old as we did in the good old the good days. Good old days. Um, and and th there's a hilarious story to tell you. It was so funny because that that day it was so warm, and we Very still had yeah. snow, but it was so warm, so the snow was rotten, and we wanted to have this ret retro look kind of the picture, like two guys walking on skiing in the Norwegian mountains. Yeah. Very thing. retro. And we went up a hill down on the other side of the lake and. Since I'm born with skis on my feet, I, I don't think it was a huge problem. Well, that wasn't the I problem. I just walked up where we should. That, that wasn't the problem. Then, and then you came. That was, but that wasn't the problem. The problem <laughs> was that um, for the styling of the shoot, I was wearing vintage boots. Uh, <laughs> and those vintage boots were about three sizes smaller than my feet. And, and this is just done for the fo f photo. So you kind of know that you're going to wear them for a minute. You're going to pose for the camera. And, and that's it, right? The problem, yeah. the problem was that I needed to get to the place where Arne was standing yeah. and I needed to get there wearing these boots and, and with the skis attached. And, it and, was, and you struggled. And it, I struggled because not only were, were the boots three sizes too small, but the, the, the binding on the ski didn't quite match the shoe. <laughs> so I couldn't get it in the right way. And so my foot wasn't attached to the ski as it should. So, at one point, I stepped on the snow. Like you went straight to the bottom. It's like <laughs> I slowly glided down like this. And then I, I put up this camera because I wanted to film in case something funny happened. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it did. And and then we made this film, which we will post later. We have to edit something mm. like, or we have to zoom in or something. I don't know. It's it's pretty much oh, 40, Eric is doing it. It's I don't know how 45 Eric. minutes of me trying to get onto the <laughs> snow without gliding down. It's so funny. Just there's one it. point. There's one point that is pretty hilarious where I am slowly sliding down the snow, and the last thing you see is the tip of my <laughs> the tip of my eyeglass and my hair, and that's all you see. And I'm talking and laughing. Uh, and a and little bit saying like a lot of beef and saying words. a lot of very ugly you know, Swedish bad words because uh, you know at the same time I am frustrated because uh, I keep you know sliding down um, and that but is the picture came out really nice but it was a lot of work taking one yeah. picture but it was so funny 
And, and the you way know what you they say? You were so gracefully. It's like, poof, boom, bah. <laughs> Yeah, and what you know what they say, uh, suffer for fashion, yeah. you suffer for art. Um, and, and what was supposed to be two minutes wearing uh, a, a, a pair of boots that were three sizes smaller than they should have been, uh, ended up being about a 48 minute uh, photo session. I couldn't feel my feet by the time I was over. It was so bad. And you were also, your oh, boots were, were also... Was horrible. They were so nar narrow, so tight. It, yeah. it was... I couldn't actually almost walk when we went down from that but hill. But they looked good. But we looked so good. We looked yeah. stunning. <laughs> so yeah. So, so that, that was funny and we have um, part two of the collection is coming later. So we're going to yeah. do the same over again. Then we're going to go somewhere else around. Yeah, we're going to go higher up in altitude to get yeah. that winter feel. But again um, we have to put, them on, put on the garments ourselves because yeah. we can't have a big team with models and stuff. And do some fun styling yeah. again which I can't wait to do. It was really fun. I mean it, was, it really took me back 20 years ago when we were styling a lot of shoots. Uh, and fashion shows. And doing and styling for fashion shows here in Norway. It's it's fun. But a it lot was, of fun. It was a bit strange to be on both sides yeah. of the camera in a way. It was, yeah. You had to keep an eye on the garment and you had to look in the camera yeah. and and the collection that is coming is kind of like the the look of it is this. It's inspired by the golden age of the Norwegian ski sweater, as we like calling it. It's kind of all these beautiful '50s style ski sweaters, but done kind of in a more modern way. The patterns are are moved. There's a lot of different techniques, but we wanted that. We wanted that feeling in the shoot. So yeah, we really needed the old skiing boots, which are amazing. And uh, luckily, our neighbor uh, on the other side had them. Unfortunately, um, well, fortunately for us, uh, the ones she had were for her and she has <laughs> not larger ours, <laughs> uh, you know her feet are on the larger scale of, of women's sizes but not large enough for us no. but still large enough or small enough that we could still wear them which is okay yeah. but yeah it, I, I can't wait until these photographs uh, come out it will be fun and, uh, and, and and fun to see like the reactions like how people react to it because it's like it's more like normal kind of because we are wearing it yeah it's yeah. not Her, Fre, mus, mus. Mus, 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 mus. get her down yeah. get her down up. Up. there you go <laughs> well, she's seeing she this. sees stuff out the window yeah. and then she but gets... Helme is quiet today yeah because he doesn't see yeah. anything yeah. maybe she wants our attention now yeah, yeah. That's... because i think we have spent 15 minutes now yeah, 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 we had a lot to catch up on, so our 15 minutes are pretty much out or gone. Yeah. I think we have um, to save something for next, ne next yeah, Wednesday. Yeah, we do, yeah, we have to save something for next Wednesday. <laughs> I'm going to be dressing up every day, I'm telling you, Arne. Yeah, me too, from, from the waist, waist up. up. I'll be doing both waist up and top down. Um, Maybe we should start doing that. I would like, I'm thinking about that sometimes. I see old people on YouTube, I, I watch the, some like this old... Uh, what's it called advanced style and stuff yeah. there's like old people who are so stylish mm -hmm. i want to be stylish when i get old me too maybe i, I should be start really now stylish. Yeah. maybe we are old now I'm maybe we should start now and be stylish i'm considering bringing out my favorite loafers that mm -hmm. i love so much i haven't worn them since we went to south africa which was the last thing we did before covid so it was in february of 2020 after that i kind of put my loafers in a in, a, in the closet and they're mm -hmm. just kind of there waiting for a new occasion to wear them and i haven't had any so uh, i might actually wear my loafers next time we we do sit in it for a bit at least you know you wear them or you have to put them up so people can see yeah maybe no. i'll do that i see it i can see it i yeah. can tell you i can definitely see the holes in your long johns <laughs> <Yeah>. okay <laughs> Okay, but no. hey, I mean, you did a good job from no. the waist up, I have to say. So, yeah, this has been a fun hour. Uh, oh, no, sorry, 15 minutes. 15 minutes, Carlos, come on. We it's, only do 15 minutes. Yeah, that's We've never done this for one hour, have we? No, I, 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 don't, I don't think, think we, so. we could ever come up with... Could you ever imagine coming up with so much to Not talk about? Not much happened around here. Yeah. We're like in the middle of nowhere. There's no people around. It's so quiet. Nothing yeah. happens. So... And okay. here we are, we're pretending we're in the Serengeti, yeah. enjoying the beautiful giraffes and... And soon we will be there. Yeah, we hope. Somewhere. Yeah, we hope. But anyway, we're gonna go, if, you know, if all goes well, if things, you know, start improving um, and more people start getting the vaccine in Norway, we are planning a sailing weekend 
uh, in the end of May with Gita, who is our travel agent. And uh, the whole idea is to do some sailing and uh, plan for 2022 when we can, you know, hopefully resume our trips again. And <laughs> I get so easily seasick. Yeah. I have to bring those. Yeah, I think you need one for each. You need, yeah, you need a seasickness need. bracelet for each arm and then maybe one for each ankle as well. <laughs> And your seasick pills. I'm horrible when I'm out in the ocean. But, yeah. But I can do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah, we look forward to that sailing trip. Uh, we actually look forward to getting out of the house. I was thinking the other day that probably, I mean, for me, uh, having had COVID and now feeling recovered, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a hundred percent recovered yet. But I would say I'm like 92. 94%, even 95% recovered. And I feel that that's the energy that I'm getting now, the energy that I'm actually getting bored now because I really want to get out and meet people. I want to go travel. on a holiday somewhere. I want to go on a holiday, yeah. I want to go to Venice in Italy. Oh, yeah. Or Paris. Paris or... Or a knitting cruise. I want to go on a knitting cruise. Yeah. And I was thinking back on the times, the days we had in New Mexico. I want to oh, go back. I want to go back to New Taos Mexico and Santa Fe. I love oh, it. Oh yeah. I want to go somewhere. Yeah. Can we go somewhere? Please, yes. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> let's go. No, not yet. As no. soon as it's safe to travel and the borders open up, I think we're gonna go. You know what we should do? Because we've been locked up in this house for such a long time, and our our career or our skills are you know strongest within design and we need inspiration i think we actually need to go on what they in the old days called the grand tour yeah we have to do a grand we have to go on a grand tour we have to go down to italy and france and you know what they did on the grand tours they brought home <laughs> yeah. they brought brought home yeah, some oh nice yeah, okay Chachkas. yeah so you're already planning what you're going to shop <laughs> i think on my grand tour is going to venice yeah there's some nice antique shops there. yeah i love venice it's one of my favorite Love. cities for inspiration, that's for sure. Yeah. yeah no, anyway, no, anyway, okay, okay. we're still, <laughs> we're still, <laughs> we're still dreaming uh, yeah. and who knows? I mean, they're actually saying that Norway is going to get back to normal in September or October once the majority of the population has mm. been vaccinated. And they talk about having that vaccine passport. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that will happen, but... Yeah. I think maybe maybe in other countries they will have it and then we need to have it. Yeah, because there's but no doubt we're definitely... I hope definitely... they don't close down again during the summer because I'm so ready now to go on the Beatle trips. Well, but they say that by summer everybody up until 45 will have been vaccinated by, by July. Or everybody from... Up to 45? Yeah, no. <laughs> Not up to the other way around. From 45 and up to oh, 100, well, then I have a chance. Everybody okay. will be vaccinated yeah. in Norway by then, um, and that includes us because there's no doubt we're gonna go get that vaccine yeah. um, because that's the only way to get back to a normal life, I think. So, um, so hopefully summer will be fine, and then by fall, everybody, all adults, will have been vaccinated, and hopefully in October, November, they can open up Norway. Yeah. And the moment we can travel again, we're gonna get on a plane and we're gonna go. That's for sure. We're going to do knitting cruises. Again. And we're going to do knitting cruises. We're going to go to this beautiful this safari place. here, yeah. whatever that is, we can watch in South this. Africa. We can sit and look at this picture. We're going to do a knitting doing. safari. We're going to be doing our garden tours in England. Oh, I miss England. Oh, yes, I do too. And we're going to do our cruises. No, no, we are getting sentimental. We should stop now. I think we have, we have spent 15 minutes, yes. Carlos. We have spent 15 minutes. Um, if you want to know a little bit about how our cruise uh, works, yeah. Go to Natasha and Petra's channel at Knit Inc, uh, her, their YouTube channel, and you'll enjoy their beautiful uh, recap. Um, there's a lot of drama as well. I don't know if you remember Natasha, uh, her passport had expired. She didn't know. Oh, yeah. She, yeah, it was a big drama as well. So it's an exciting story. Go there and check that out. Go to our, go to our Instagram, uh, arnacarlos.com. Oh, sorry, go to our Instagram, which is Arna Carlos, to check out the, um, the images that Arna posted on the progress of, the, uh, of your finishing of someone else's embroidery. Oh, yeah. And make sure to check out Sam at Irish Farm Art and his beautiful work. Um, I think I want to finish the podcast by showing it up, showing it again. Um, so here we are, Arna and Carlos, with Arna and Carlos. The same? Yeah, and we have a beautiful we have a beautiful hallway with a beautiful stair, and it's full of art. And uh, we're finding a place of honor for this, Sam. Uh, it's going to be in our staircase. Yeah, I think we have like 
That's a very mm -hmm. nice place. And once we install it, we're going to take a photograph and we're going to show you uh, what we did with it, Sam. So we're going to be sending you an Instagram message at that point and probably post it as well so everyone else can see it too. So yeah, here it is. Very, very lovely. Thank you so much for sending this. And uh, thank you everybody for watching our YouTube channel as always. Yeah, and remember to subscribe and put on your notifications because then you have a message every time there's a new video out. Yeah. And, and we want to be honest with you, we have our subscribe rate has been going down and that is not very good for us. So we would really <laughs> like to appeal to you guys. Please, if you're not subscribing to our channel, hit that button because it really helps us with the algorithms and all of that. It helps us reach more people and the more people we reach, the more we can actually record these videos. I don't want to reach a point where we can't afford to anymore. So please subscribe to our channel. We are begging you. Well, we're not begging you, but no. we, are, we are encouraging you. Please subscribe to our channel because we really need the... And you're emotional today. Yeah, yeah, I don't want to lose. I don't want to lose our channel. <laughs> we're not losing it. No, we're not losing it because we're appealing to everybody to subscribe. Yeah. Okay, so this is it. This is our 15-minute podcast, so, and we're done. Yeah. See you on Sunday. See you on Sunday, Pong Pong Day. Uh, we can't wait to show you what you can do with all this. Thank you so much for watching. <laughs> Bye. Bye. See you.